Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today we're talking stabilization, in particular the form of back bars or side bars. So I was of the strong belief for a long time that back bars were for the highfalutin archers, the target archers, and those that really wanted to show off how many stabilizers they can put on their bow at once. And then bow companies like Elite here with this cure start putting stabilizer bushings for the back side of the riser and in certain bows they're in two places here with the cure it's only one but it's way down low and I started seeing more and more people run a back bar and I was like all right I got to give this a shot so this is the torque set from CBE part of the outdoor group and I think personally it's the best bang for your buck system uh, trophy ridge makes a similar price system I think this one though is much better built and a little bit more robust the knuckle on it in particular that uh, supports the back bar is really really well built uh, I have had zero budging from it. I've dropped it uh, off of trees before. Shh, don't tell anyone. And it has not moved one iota. So I'm really impressed with the build quality. I bang my stabilizers off a lot of stuff, walking through the woods, getting out of the vehicle. And so it's nice to know that that doesn't move. So this set from CBE is the Hunter model. has an 11 inch front bar and a seven inch back bar and comes with four one ounce weights. You usually want to run about a three to one ratio. That's kind of a good place to start, kind of a vanilla setup, if you will. So I got one ounce out front and three in the back and the pitch and the angle of the back bar really depends on you and like I said earlier I never thought that I needed a back bar I never thought that I would need that to level off my bow but what we always think of with stabilizers is that they're meant to correct what we're already doing and that's not true they should help stabilize us in what we already need to do so let me uh, illustrate this a little bit here let me take the bow off the hook so here's the important thing to note with a stabilizer setup right here's how the bow sits in my hand without me doing anything this is how I would naturally grip the bow. I'd have the pressure there. My knuckles are off. Again, I have a torqueless grip here. I can sit here and move my fingers all around, and the bow does not want to tilt to one side. Using this back part at this angle for me, that's how it works. I'm going to unrelease uh, it here using that quick set. And now if I try to hold the bow, look where it goes. It goes down and to the right. Like, I'm trying to hold it there. It's just going. It just won't stop. There's a lot of weight here with this CBE sight, and there's a lot of weight with this Hamski rest. That back bar critically keeps that from falling over to that side. So when I'm shooting the bow without the back bar and I come to full draw, I have to grip the bow. I have to do sorts of odd things to keep that bow upright. It's not just the back tension, it's my actual grip because if it's different every single time or not easily repeatable, my tuning is gonna suffer and my air flight's gonna suffer. So let's just show this one more time. Here we are without any of that stabilization. I'm just trying to hold the bow upright here. It knows it just wants to go forward and just slightly to the right. As soon as I put this back bar in, and I love these uh, quick disconnects here. Most every manufacturer makes a quick disconnect system, uh, and it allows you to not have to sit there and screw and unscrew and screw and unscrew when you have to move things. Just leaves the knuckle right attached to the uh, back side of the riser here. Go ahead and get that installed real quick. Take seconds. And now the bow just sits there. It's exactly what you want, right? Just that little bit of weight. It's not like I'm shooting a 15 inch back bar with seven ounces of weight back here. I could sit here and move all my fingers. It's right there held in my thumb and index finger and it doesn't want to go anywhere. Now, I run less weight here when I switch up sights. And let me talk about that for a moment. This sight here is a CBE uh, Engage Hybrid 3-pin. There's a lot of weight to this sight. It's got a dovetail mount, a lot of intricacies. It's a slider and a fixed pin all in once. If you're interested in a review on this uh, sight, I'll put that link to that video in the description below. But if you run a different sight or a lighter sight system, I actually have to remove weight off the back. So for example, the other sight that I shoot is the EZV. This is the EZV 7. It is seven ounces. Again, video uh, links in the description below if you're interested. This thing is so light, I actually she run all the weight off of the bow. I just keep this one ounce here and I remove the three ounces over here. Just the back bar stabilization, just the weight of the bar alone is enough to keep this upright and not actually overtake me, right? So right now it's holding steady. I don't want to add so much weight that I end up tilting too far to the left. So this is why I don't like to shoot with my quiver on my bow. I'm very particular about the balancing point of my bow and I don't like to have all of that weight on the one side. It's really going to take me over and I don't want to just 
just have to put a whole bunch of weight or a really long stabilizer on the other side just to counteract that balance. And it's unnecessary. You don't have to shoot with the quiver on your boat. Now, some people do, and that's up to them. That's how they prefer to shoot. I, since I hunt out of a saddle, when I'm sitting in the tree, I can have my quiver sitting in the front part of my pack right here. And if I need another arrow, I can easily grab it right there in front of me. I don't have to keep it on my bow. So this is a little bit about back bars. Now, there's a whole lot of intricacies here when it comes to what the angle and the pitch of the back bar is. So let's talk about how I found this angle and how it worked for me because it can be really daunting with how little just a small minute angle of adjustment can really change the overall feel and balance of the bow. So there are two planes with a back bar. You have the vertical plane and you have the horizontal plane. I would much rather focus on the horizontal plane because right the further away you get the bar from the bow the more action that weight has and more effect that has on the bow. Moving it up and down doesn't affect it nearly as much as that horizontal plane. So basically, I didn't mess too much with the vertical plane. I basically stuck it onto the bow. I put it at about a 10 degree, just eyeballed it there, and then cinched it tight, and I haven't touched it since. I have not played with the vertical adjustment whatsoever. It was a lot easier for me to play with the horizontal adjustment. So if you look here, I don't actually have this super far out from the bow. It's maybe sitting off at about uh, somewhere between a 12 to 15 degree angle, and that seems to be working perfectly for me as I hold the bow. With my target rig, however, I do have to move it further out because there's more weight, there's more riser weight to it, the sight's really heavy, the target rest is really heavy, and the way that bow has to balance, this has to move out. So right now I know that I have it moved out five turns, right, or five clicks on these uh, engraved uh, witness marks here on the knuckle. When I want to, I need to move it three more out, and that gets me to eight out total. So I think the five and three rule, start at five, move three for the target bow, and that gets me at the same uh, balance point that I want between both bows. I do not change the angle, like I said, at the vertical. I do not change that. I like that 10 degree down. It keeps it down and out of the way. And as a kind of a side note, you'll see a lot of target archers do this. You can use the back bar to push into your abdomen and just kind of hold your bow. This is something I'm kind of interested to try. I don't like putting my cam into my clothing because I run limb stops and they stick out pretty healthily off the bow as well as does this limb pad. And I'm afraid that it's going to like catch in my clothing. I'm going to try to move the bow and it might make a pop sound or something like that. So I'd rather put the uh, back bar here against my abdomen and I can clip onto the string and I can hold the bow a lot steadier while I watch that animal come into range. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, Nate. Yeah. So you can stick the back bar in your abdomen. You could balance the bow a little bit, but what if I'm just a dude sh shooting a cheap light sight uh, and a really lightweight bow, shorter axle to axle bow, and all I do is bow hunt. Do I really need to run a back bar? If you're finding the balance is great for you and you're actually really isn't a struggle, then no, I would say you don't need a back bar. I shoot relatively high, high end sights and rest. Well, I shouldn't say relatively. I do shoot high end sights and rest. They're quite robustly built and they're quite heavy. I do need that back bar. Now, up until this point, I hadn't started to shoot that. I shot a lot more inexpensive, more cheaply made equipment that wasn't nearly as robust and as heavy. And I never really needed a back bar as badly as I do this year. Sometimes the bow itself is the actual problem because it's very top heavy or something like that. <coughs> Matthews. Ooh, excuse me. And so therefore you have to run that back bar in order to maintain that top weight. Or if it wants to really pitch forward, really pitch backward, you might have to add that as well in order to get it to balance. But I don't think it's for everybody. I really don't. For the way this bow is set up, it is night and day. And you can see it there with how it wants to pitch forward and to the right. It is night and day when I shoot this with the back bar or without one. And my groups, my accuracy really suffer if I try to do it without one. And also you might think that the price point is insane and it's really not. So I've shot a lot of cheap stabilizers in the past. I have nothing wrong with cheap stabilizers. But when it comes to getting two stabilizers and the knuckle, the CBE set in particular runs in the 140 to 150 range. You could probably find it cheaper if you find it used. And that is a really good deal for two hunting stabilizers. They're in the right length as well for me because I do a lot of IBO bow hunter class shooting as well as indoor bow hunter class shooting. And I need to have stabilizers that are less than 12 inches in length. So 11 plenty short and 7 is plenty short 
support even with the knuckle point connection. So this set makes perfect sense for me. I'm able to kill two birds with one stone and I'm able to use it on both my target rig and my hunting rig and be able to balance everything out no matter what the season. So anyway, that's all for this video on back bars. And if you have any questions about how I do any more fine tuning with my back bars and how I set my bows up with them now, please follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. You can always send me an email and yes, you can always leave a comment here on YouTube. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and we'll get to see you next time.